Hi, I'm Simon Pair, and I'm going to read an extract from Thomas Hurleman's most recent novel, Der Rote Diamant, The Red Diamond, published in August 2022 by S. Fischer and shortlisted for the Swiss Book Prize. Here in my village east of Zurich, half of the inhabitants are called Hurleman, but the author comes from the Catholic centre of Switzerland and went to monastery school like the novel's hero, Arti, who we meet here, arriving at his forbidding new boarding school, high in the mountains with his mother, Mimi. At the exit from the cathedral, we stopped again, turned and gazed up into the fuzzy twilight of a space the like of which we had never seen before, capacious and high and full of adornment, altogether a stunning chaos, here solid, there soft, soaring, carrying, falling, flowing, fleeting. A rook, Mimi declared to the high darkening dome, dipping into Rococo. Every shape there is, I whispered, tilting my head back like her, and too much of everything. Artie, darling, she said spikily, please do not speak such drivel ever again. We stood there as if at an air show, and I pointed to a coat of arms at the zenith of the highest arch to avoid completely losing myself in all the symbols. The coat of arms featured a black two-headed bird looking left and right and wearing a crown with a small cross on it. It was the double eagle, Mimi explained, the arms of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy. Didn't your father tell you? Our Lady of the Snows is a Habsburg foundation. You pupils are the last subjects of the Empress, she whispered in awe. Just imagine, the Habsburgs used to own half the world, the whole of Mexico and half the east stretching far into Russia. Our ancient ancestor Sender Katz travelled for months to get to Switzerland from Drohobich where he bought a fur hat and a suitcase from Svlatobluk and Koln. Months? I asked in disbelief. Years, Mimi answered. Send across the continent on foot. All he had in his suitcase were teflin, a few stolen potatoes and his tailoring scissors. Mimi took off her driving gloves and dipped two fingers in the stoop. A twitch of her freshly painted lips suggested the water was ice cold, close to freezing. Look after yourself, Artie, darling, and please, here Mimi's eyes grew moist, don't forget me. As she went down on bended knee, I saw glittering snow crystals melting on her wide-brimmed summer hat, and suddenly I understood that crossing the Acheron had had the established consequences. The wasp in the glass had fallen silent, the canopy swing no longer stood on the lawn. And Mimi? I would lose her at Our Lady of the Snows Monastery, as we both sensed. I think you'll meet the Empress soon, Mimi said, switching to the tone of a tourist guide and casting off her gloom. Every year on the anniversary of the Emperor's death, she attends the Requiem Mass the Fathers read for him. Now she even sketched a smile. But she may have a different reason for coming. So I've heard, in any case. The door slammed thunderously shut behind us, and once again the cathedral facade, surely as long as the Titanic, threatened to crush us. The Fathers, Mimi continued, will tell you more about the Empress. Maybe you will let me know par occasion, by letter, or when we see each other again next summer. I would so love to know if it really exists. The famous diamond. What kind of diamond? I asked irritably. Red, apparently. A red crystal. And they say it sparkles even in the dark like a star. It used to belong to the Habsburgs, but when it went missing, the monarchy collapsed. Huh? The red diamond is deemed lost, Mimi said dreamily. Apparently it is kept here in the monastery. Just look at this facade and the towers, hiding places everywhere. We're hopelessly late, Mama, I replied, and I think I'll have other things to do than look for a diamond. Having tried and failed to bribe the head monk to give her darling some preferential treatment, Mimi reluctantly abandons him to his austere fate, but not without planting this idea in his mind. Locating the red diamond gradually becomes an all-consuming quest for Artie and his friends, such as the audacious scheming viper. It takes them down into the ossuary of the cathedral and up into its towers as they piece together how one precious item of Habsburg treasure may have made its way from Vienna to a mysterious location in Our Lady of the Snows monastery. Thomas Hurleyman combines intimate knowledge of the very peculiar realm of monastery schools with oddball flights of imagination in a novel that reads like a cross between a boarding school coming of age tale and the name of the rose. 
all in the author's trademark, witty and ornate style. This book is also a tribute to his mother. Hurleyman is one of Switzerland's most famous living writers, and it is a pity that so far only one of his early books has been translated into English, thus Garden House as The Couple in 1991.